Welcome to the fifth and final segment of Lecture 6 on Distributive Justice. In this I'm going to talk a bit more about um, equality of resources and introduce something called the Difference Principle, which is perhaps the most famous contribution to political philosophy in the late uh, 20th century by an American philosopher called John Rawls, R-A-W-L-S. Now, one possible way of, pardon me, uh, distributing things would, uh, income and wealth and so on, would just be to give everybody exactly the same. And so a distribution uh, is just if, if everybody has the same amount of resources, like goods and services or whatever, economic goods and services. Now, this is a little better than the equality of welfare Pardon me, I'm out of control here. Uh, then, the, uh, then the equality of welfare uh, suggestion, because it doesn't have the measurement and comparison problem that welfare has. It's easy to measure uh, things like income and wealth. It's difficult to measure things like happiness or utility. <clears throat> it also solves the expensive taste problem. It does. Remember, the expensive taste problem was that people who had champagne tastes needed to be given more resources in order to satisfy those tastes than people who had beer tastes. And that didn't seem fair. People should be held responsible, maybe, for the tastes that they develop. So the, um, the quality of resources solves this problem because it just simply distributes everybody the same amount of resources. And if you, if you really like champagne, well, you know, in a way, kind of tough luck. You're going to have to save up. You're not going to get as much as champagne every week like somebody who, um, who, who likes beer is. The problem, though, is it's still subject to the, um, to the leveling down problem. The, um, the le if you recall, the leveling down problem was that um, strict equality, simple equality, just demands that, says that everybody should be um, equal. And it says that a, a distribution which everybody has the same is better than a distribution in which people don't have the same, but in which everybody has more than people do uh, under the, the strict equality uh, regime. And this seems wrong. It seems, you know, just seems like grudgingness or whatever. Why not let people uh, ha have more if, it, if everybody's better off? So almost nobody holds the simple view. A more complicated view about distributing resources is that of John Rawls. And I mentioned this, an uh, American philosopher who died a, a few years ago. He wrote a very famous and influential book called A Theory of Justice. And he proposed the following general conception of justice. That all social primary goods, and by that he meant uh, things like um, rights and liberties and opportunities, and he also meant uh, resources like um, income and wealth and are to be distributed equally unless an unequal distribution of any of those goods makes the least favored better off. It's to the advantage of the least favored. Okay, this is called the difference principle. Um, you know, I, I'm not entirely clear why. Um, even though I've been a great fan of John Rawls. Anyway, that's um, what it's called. He says, a distribution of rights and responsibilities is just if and only if everybody receives the same unless some unequal distribution results in the least well-off receiving more than under the strict um, egalitarian principle. Now, again, there's some strengths to this view. Um, it does, it, it works with measurable items like income and wealth. And it avoids the leveling down objection, right? Because uh, a distribution in which the least well, least favored person, the least well off, uh, have more is better than a, a pure equality when everybody has the same but nobody has very much. And this seems intuitively uh, incorrect. It also uh, creates incentives for people to um, to contribute to society because, uh, and if, if they if they do things that, that earn them more so long as that makes the least well off better off, then they get to keep what they're doing. So they, there are incentives built into this, and it, so it makes it all a more attractive um, theory than, uh, than strict or simple equality of resources. It's complicated equality of resources, a difference principle. 
it, people have pointed out some problems with it. Um, it doesn't uh, it doesn't provide extra shares for uh, for people that that suffer from from natural handicaps like. Uh, if you're, it seems perhaps fair that if you're born, you know, paralyzed from the waist down, then the, um, in addition to your fair share of resources, you should perhaps get a bit more that compensates you for being in a wheelchair. And um, the difference principle doesn't make this provision. It also, in, there's a way in which it doesn't completely hold res people responsible for the choices they make. It does create incentives, so people who do choose to contribute more perhaps can have more. Um, but it, uh, by putting a floor beneath everybody, it means that some people can, uh, well, if they don't want to contribute at all, they still get the uh, the basic floor, the the because the, um, they are not, they are the least favored in society according to the um, to to the description. They're the least if, if you're the least well off, you can't go below that. Now that's um, that's reasonable for uh, maybe. Uh, for uh, you know, mothers with three children on welfare, perhaps, but it also provides an income for beach bums and people who just want to hang out and do nothing. And some people think that that's unfair. It doesn't hold people for, responsible for their choices to not contribute. The, there's another way, an attempt to get around these problems that's due to another American philosopher called uh, Ronald Dworkin. Uh, who died just uh, recently? Um, he suggested um, that we should we should produce a theory of justice that provided everybody initially with the same uh, amount of resources, so that you're starting at the beginning of your life when you graduate. From, well, let's say when you're 18, you get a university education if you need it, and you get a certain amount of capital, etc., and then you're turned free to do with it as you wish. Those who wish to uh, work hard and uh, use it to uh, c contribute to society will perhaps end up with more than those who choose not to but uh, um, um, and maybe you know t uh, take life very easy. But it's, it's a choice that people can make. He also coupled the um, his initial, his strict equal, his initial, uh, so he has an initial but not uh, but not uh, through time, but initially everybody gets the same. Together with, they get insurance against that natural handicaps. So he attempted to deal with this problem of some people not being socially handicapped, but, but naturally handicapped because of uh, you know, medical reasons or whatever, by um, suggesting that behind the whole system should be an insurance scheme that provided, uh, that provided insurance against being uh, bad luck in the uh, in the natural lottery. So his theory does is ambition sensitive in that uh, there's in this initially strictly equal distribution, right? So you start off initially uh, it's strictly equal and then you after that you can your choices um, will determine what uh, share of the world's resources you get and that seems that seems fair to many people. It's a starting gate theory. Everybody's equal at the starting gate. He also brought in this uh, idea of a hypothetical insurance market. So we imagine, you know, how much would people pay uh, if they didn't know whether they were going to be uh, um, handicapped in the, in the natural lottery and attempted to deal with uh, those, the higher costs that are due to, um, um, to, to circumstances beyond people's control. So it was, um, he tried to make a, a distinguish between choices and circumstances, tried to uh, make things fair depending on people's circumstances, but also make things fair in the in the sense that um, people could make different choices, and this would affect uh, the outcomes of their lives. So it's it's a very unfortunately very complicated theory, and that's probably one of its uh, one of its weaknesses. Is it's actually complicated to figure out how to how to implement something like this. But um, he um, it has some strengths. It provides for incentives for incentives for people to contribute. It makes people responsible for their choices in a way that um, if you want to be a beach bum, well, your initial endowment's going to run out after a while, and you're going to have to go to work. So it made um, it makes people responsible for choices, and it provides these uh, insurance against the natural disadvantages that uh, that Rawls's theory didn't um, didn't cover. The weaknesses, well, it's com it's complicated, but and it. Um, the distribution is actually going to determine, depend not only just on 
choices people make, but their luck. They're, people are going to decide to do things, and then for reasons totally outside of their control, things are going to go bad. But the theory doesn't distinguish between, um, between the choices people make and whether or not these choices are, uh, are good ones independently of, you know, it's not just that they, they haven't tried hard enough to make a good choice, it's just that the world has turned out against them. Brute luck, it doesn't determine between option luck, um, choices, and brute luck, um, having to do with how the world is. It also um, presupposes that everything people produce is produced individually. And it's so that you can say, okay, this person made these choices, and as a result, as a result of their choices, the um, so much more was contributed to the world, and the person gets to keep, you know, a good share of that. Um, and that's a uh, that's a little tricky, as we've seen, because the, most things in the world are produced cooperatively. They involve specialization and the division of labor, and uh, it becomes very difficult to disentangle. Uh, each person's individual contribution to the to the production. So, the, the, making people's um, what people get depend on choices seems good on one point, but on the other hand, uh, it presupposes that you that there's a causal relation between people's individual choices at one time and how much uh, uh, how many resources they have at another, and that may that. Uh, um, that connection perhaps uh, is not as, as strong as, uh, as Dworkin presumes. So let's review what we've got here. This, as I say, has been a complicated discussion. We've been talking about theories of justice, right? We started here and we broke it down into three types, retributive, uh, punishment and reward, compensatory, restoring people to where they were before some, uh, some problem happened, some accident, and distributive justice, which concerned how society should, or even how a company should distribute uh, um, the uh, resources and income and wealth and welfare, etc., within the, uh, within the, um, within that society or company or whatever. Okay, and we looked at four different types of this. We had equality, there was equal respect for rights, which produced the libertarian view, the idea that uh, you, people could acquire property by initial uh, initial acquisition, by fencing it off and closing it, whatever, and then they could barter and, and exchange and give and sell and that, that it, whatever turned out, whatever distribution of property turned out after all of this was done was just because it respected people's rights. We looked at equality of opportunity, the idea that uh, if, if you allow people to compete for positions where <coughs> without um, uh, without discriminating against them on arbitrary grounds, then what they get will be what they deserve. And um, we talked about some problems with that. We talked about equal consideration of interests, which is <coughs> produced utilitarian justice, which wasn't was uh, it, it's appealing in that it seems to depend, be able to develop a theory of equal shares based on um, based on. Um, uh, the diminishing returns um, of uh, more and more income or more and more candies or whatever. But we saw that there were a lot of problems with that. It, it, it basically presupposed that everybody was the same, and people are not the same. Then we looked at equality of welfare, but we didn't like that because it leveled everybody down. Everybody, it said that it was better for everybody to be equal than for everybody to be better off, and that seemed wrong. And the same problem was true of strict equality of resources. We're now down here looking at resources. Strict equality of resources um, says that a situation in which, every, which levels everybody down to the same is better than one in which everybody has a bit more, but some people have more than others. The difference principle was perhaps uh, a better idea here because it said, yes, you can have, um, you can have um, unequal distributions, but only if the unequal distribution is in the service of making the least well-off person better off. And that seemed reasonable. And then another theory that seemed possible too, plausible, was Dworkin's idea of giving everybody initial equality of resources and some sort of insurance against uh, you know things going really, really badly in the natural lottery, and then turning them loose and making um, things, um, making what happened um, dependent on how, on people's the choices people make. The problem was that it didn't seem to tease out the way that 
what people get is often a matter of cooperation and not just of individual effort. So that's a, an outline of the, the various ways that people think about distri distributive justice and the considerations that map back and forth between them. So here's your last question of this lecture. Which of the following distribution bets best fits the description of strict equality of resources, economic utilitarianism, and the difference principle? It's basically three questions. I'm sneaking three questions in here. So pause the video and see if you can map a number here onto a letter down here. Okay, well, let's start with uh, strict equality of resources. Everybody gets the same. Which of these distributions does everybody get the same? Well, it's easy. That's uh, it's A, right? Everybody get no. Sorry, sorry, I misread that. It's B. Everybody. Ron gets a thousand. Sally, Sal gets a thousand, and Tom gets a thousand. So the answer, strict equality, is B. Economic utilitarianism. The idea that what you have to do is maximize the total um, that everybody gets in dollar terms. Well, that's easy to figure out. The, you just look down the total column here, and you see that 5,000 is better than 3 and better than 4. So the answer uh, to number um, 2 would be A. And the difference principle is the view that you can tolerate inequality if everybody's better off. Uh, in particular, if the least favored person is better off. And if you look here in our remaining possibility C, you'll see that, uh, looking across, that Ron is the least favored person. So this is the person we look at. And Ron is better off under distribution C than he is under distribution A or distribution B. So the answer to which one of these would be um, chosen by the dis difference principle is C. Okay, well, we'll see you for 